Thor. Hey guys, NCAP24 here from SmartMadden.com, coming back with another video out of the single back dice slot formation scheme series. Today we're going to look at all cover three beaters out of this formation. We're going to show you over 40 different setups on 12 different plays to just be able to take control of anybody that's wanting to call cover three against you, whether it be a cover three blitz, cover three um, when they mix it in your coverages, or just cover three, they stay in all game long. We're going to be able to show you over the top plays, uh, to the sidelines, quick throws, screens the whole nine yards to take control of the game against cover three. So let's go ahead and show you the first play we're going to look at is PA draw shot. With PA draw shot what we're going to do is going to show you this unique route to start off with which is going to be this right receiver um, and show you different ways to do different route combinations to get him open. The first thing you want to do is just put your running back on a block on every single one of these plays because you don't want that funky animation on PA draw shot. The first set up is just simply to put the A on and out, and that's it. What that's going to do is going to open up the middle of the field when the uh, linebacker goes ahead and widens out, and when he does, you're throwing it right there in the middle, and get that easy 15 to 20 yards real quick uh, blitz speeder right there. The next one we're going to do is put the A on a in, and we're going to hit the B as well. But I want to make sure that you know, by design, the X receiver is going to go ahead and get a hat on the free safety. Okay, what that's going to do is if you time the throw right, you're going to be able to get some really good yards after the catch if you're able to get around that free safety, and a lot of times resulting into a touchdown. I want to make sure before we get any further, I mentioned that all these plays are going to be in a play call sheet that is going to be available for you on smartmadden.com. Um, and what you're going to be able to use as a tool to be able to learn these plays in practice and also be able to learn these plays and use these in a game, having a play call sheet at your disposal, printed out or on your desktop to be able to read those and know what you're doing and get organized with your plays. Okay, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and show this here. The B is going to go across. You time it right here. You throw it there. You see how that guy gets a hat on him. And as long as you get up the field with a little bit more... Um, agility there, you're going to be able to beat that guy down the field. And these are all the times these plays are by design, guys, to get that. You see that there? And you're going to be able to get up there if you time the correct throw. Sometimes, you know, you don't get the right throw because uh, you just time it right or the defense plays a little bit better. But if you go ahead and you time it correctly, throw it right there, you're going to have that guy. And you can see how you can get up the field and be able to get to the house if you get it right. Okay? The next play is to go ahead and put this A on a zig and motion him to the left-hand side. Block your running back, and what you're going to see here is going to go to the same B, because that's what we're highlighting first, but you're going to throw it in a little bit different window. As soon as he crosses that middle linebacker, you're going to throw it right there, and you're going to see that it has that ability to get that ball. You're talking about 25-yard gain pretty, pretty easily. The next play, which is going to be my favorite, and I want you to star this one um, on your play call sheet, because what you do here is you put the Y on a curl, the A on a streak. Now, by design, you look at the X, the Y, and the A, puts a lot of commotion on the left-hand side. This is a very hard play for a user to stay with this B receiver. What he's going to do is when he crosses, you're going to throw this ball on the left-hand side of the field. As everybody, all that commotion um, is all there, this B is going to come out, and then he's basically going to be able to catch the ball and get all the way down the sideline for huge yardage. Watch this play here. As you see, he crosses right there. You're throwing it right there, and you're going to see how easily this ball gets around the corner and I get huge yardage against cover three on this play due to the fact that there's just so much commotion you don't see him and next thing you know he's out for the races. The next play we're going to do is going to take this motion guy here on this X. We're going to put him on an in. You're going to streak both your tight end and your Y receiver and this is going to give you a different look to the B receiver. It's going to be on a high low with the X and the B. The X should take the um, guy on the left hand side a little bit closer down there as you go ahead and throw it does take a little bit more time and obviously got hit there. Um, let's try it again so you can see. As long as your uh, offense line holds up, this is a great play for you. But um, obviously, we got to make sure that th that happens here. Let's go ahead and get the blocks here. That's why you always leave a blocker in as well. You can see here you're throwing this ball right there. And you're going to have that same success. And if you make a move there, you're going to be able to get some more yardage, right? So the next play we're going to do is we're actually going to move this ball to the right-hand side. I'm going to show you that if you're on the wide side of the field, I like to do this combination. You take this B and you motion him from right to left, and you're going to go ahead and put the Y on a flat and the X on a streak, causing this nice little corner out. What you want to do is you want to pass lead this ball up, and you're going to be able to hit this corner, and you're going to see right there you get about 25 to 30 yards pretty simply on that play if you got the right coverage and the right throw down. Right? And the next thing we're going to do 
is we're going to um, go ahead and flip this play a little bit. And I want to show you an over-the-top bomb. And the reason why I flipped this play is for two reasons. I'm going to show it to you in a second. I like the combination of my first receiver running this route because he's a little bit faster than my uh, number two. But it all depends on what you got going. And I'm going to show you reason, another reason why as well. So what we're going to do here is the next setup, we're going to take this X receiver. All we're going to do is put him on a streak and move him to the right. On When he's on the right-hand side, he doesn't get bumped as often if he was on the, right, the left-hand side. The reason why is just the way cover three plays. But I want you to key on that X receiver. If the X gets bumped within the first five yards and he slows down his route, he is going to be the guy we're throwing to. If he doesn't get bumped and he's able to get down on a free release, the B is the guy we're going to be throwing to. So let me go ahead and show it to you here. Let's watch the X receiver. No bump, so we're going to throw it to this B receiver over the top for the easy, easy over the top beater for cover three. Let's go ahead and run it again. Let's see if we can get this guy to get bumped. Hopefully he will this time. And we can show you why we're keying on him as far as that goes. When you run it like this, when it's flipped, I feel like the X doesn't get bumped as much. And I want to make sure you know that. Let's see here. Let's see if he gets bumped. He doesn't get bumped again. So we're going to be able to go to this B receiver. This time we're going to try to throw the, the, the huge catch. You know, and I like to throw that um, majestic throw. Just kind of, kind of, I don't want to say it rubs it in, but it kind of just has some fun with throwing it when you know it's going to be open. But let's go ahead and try this again here. Let's see if we can get this X this time to get bumped a little bit. Because I want to see... Okay, he does get bumped a little bit. Let's see if he's the one who gets out of the play. He does, as you can see here. There's the throw. When he gets bumped, he becomes that receiver. Now I'm going to show you a different type setup here. Same setup. I'm gonna, now we're on the wide side of the field. I'm going to put the... X on a fade. Now this will work, again, over the top if you get the right time the formation but I'm going to show you a different um, option here now with the fade from the wide side the Y becomes more of a threat on the wheel route gives you another option so go ahead and show it to here as the wheel go route goes over here we're throwing this to the sidelines and you're going to be able to get this wheel route down the field for huge yardage as well by putting that guy on a fade and running it from the wide side of the field I want to make sure that I show you that option as well the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go back and um, Re, um, unflip it again, and so we can show it to you. Just that was just flipped for those setups. I'm gonna show you a little bit now without the the flipped. All right, so here we go. Put this on here. Cover three sky. Okay, perfect. All right, so now what we're gonna do here? Block your running back. The next set we're gonna do is put the tight end on a fade, and we're gonna use him as the guy does the fade away here, and he's going to be able to split the Y and the X receivers. You just watch this here. As the X goes ahead and clears it out, oop, A would have been wide open, but Kwame Short has been giving me fits lately. He was the the defensive um, player of the month, I believe, um, and he just got some nice ratings boost, and he's been really tearing up stuff, so just something to know. Here we go. And a fade. When A goes out, we get a protection here. You're going to see that you're going to be able to throw this right here, right in the middle, for an easy touchdown, guys, against cover three. That fade just kills because what you're seeing is, if you look at the combination, the Y takes the guy out, X takes this free safety in, leaving that little gap for the A receiver. Now, what we can do next here is we can also put um, the running back. And what I showed you before is um, to take that right receiver. You can also get your running back involved. Take your running back. What I do is I put him on a streak and I move him over. Then I put him on a fade because you can't put him on a fade right away. So you put him on a streak, then you move him over like this. And doing it this way, you're going to also be able to hit this um, wheel route over there and be able to kill that as well. So just a different look um, from your deep, from your offense to kind of keep them off of balance. There's a lot of times when you put the, the running back out there, the first, people, first things people do is look at that running back because it's unique why you're motioning them out there. It must be something special. We're using it as a decoy in order to get that guy open. Alrighty? So that's those plays right there, guys. And the last things we're going to show you um, is, and I'm going to move this one to the left-hand side just because uh, it works this way. You're going to take this uh, X receiver, you're going to motion him to um, the right. You're going to put the Y on a drag. You're going to put the A on a streak, the B on a streak. Now, I showed you this in the Cover 4 video. If you guys don't know, I also have a Cover 4 video with the same formation. What happens sometimes in, um, is this X and the B go down the field at the same time, and what happens is this one right cornerback sometimes 
takes a hesitation towards the X receiver because of the outside release, leaving the B wide open. Um, I watch for it. I'm not expecting it. I guess I am expecting it, but I, I'm I'm not looking at it as my first option. I'm looking at it. It's a bonus if it happens. So the X receiver is the guy that you're looking to hit. And right there's the throw to the X receiver, right? So that's an easy throw to over there. But sometimes when what happens is I want to see if I can simulate it again here and see if I can make it work. If not, we'll move on for the video because I don't want to make this video extremely long. But you can see sometimes what happens is that one guy goes ahead and he stops. He didn't do it that time. So I'm just, I'm, I was waiting too long for it. I was waiting for it. But what, what happens sometimes, and just keep it as, a, as something in the, in the memory bank, that watch the B as long as you can. Sometimes that one corner will stop. And I would say it's about 20% of the time. Stop and try to go after that Y, leaving the B wide open, nobody near him. So just kind of know that as far as a, an option on that play. So we're going to move on from this play, guys. And we're going to go ahead and look at a play called PA Halfback Look as the next um, play of interest here and bring this out and show you how we do some cover three beaters from this one alrighty hey if back look alrighty let's call our cover three and what we're gonna do to start off with is put this B on a streak and motion him to the left hand side now I put on the play call sheet this A on a curl as an option the reason why I do that is because the cover four setup here puts the A on a curl, and that's going to get the Y open, okay? However, against cover three, it's not needed. It's optional. If you know it's cover three, I would say keep the blocker in. If you don't know if it's cover three or cover four, put the A on a curl, and you're going to look at the Y or the B depending on who gets open. But I know this is cover three, obviously, because of the way it looks, plus I'm, I have it called. I would leave the A on a block, and what you're going to see is the B receiver is going to get wide open because the Y is going to take an inside release and he's going to take the attention of that free safety leaving the B wide open. All right, this is just an easy easy cover 3 beater. See how that works and you're just it's really such a simple play guys that it's one of those deals that it works great on the middle and the right hand side of the field. It still works on the left side of the field, but what happens on the le left side of the field is sometimes that left DB, if he's really good, can go ahead and try to make a play on it. So what I try to do is I try to reserve this for the middle and the right side of the field. You can carry out the play action, not a big deal. You can go ahead and bullet this ball as soon as you got that ability to, and you can see how consistent that is a really easy cover three beater that it's also a blitz beater because literally that ball comes out really, really quickly. Um, um, you keep your tight end in. You can keep your running back in. It does not need to be a play action to work. I'll show you right now again. See how I kept both those guys in? So, you know, if you want to slide protect, it doesn't matter. You know, you're, you're, you're pre protected against blitzes. Here it goes. I actually didn't get... Like, I bumped into each other that time, unfortunately. But you can see... I'm going to do the same exact thing what I was saying before. You know, keep your blockers in. And you're going to see that you're going to be able to use the same exact routes here as that guy goes here. And what I mean by a cover three blitz killer, you're literally only running out three men. Um, and that's really going to be able to really help you beat blitzes and people are going to want to stop out of it. Because most blitzers aren't going to use that free safety. They're going to use one of the linebackers. Okay. So the next one we're going to look off the same play. We're going to take this X. We're going to put him on a motion. Um, we're going to put him on a fade. And we're going to motion him to the right. And we're going to put the A on a flat. This is going to be able to go ahead and use this C route in a combination with these two routes here on the right-hand side of the field and get that catch. Kind of did a little hesitation with my uh, user skills, but unfortunately, you know, got the catch. But usually it's a little bit more fluid than that. The next play, we're going to take this X receiver and motion him to the right. We're going to put the A on a zig. And we're going to take the B, put him on a streak. When I, what's just going to happen here, guys, if you look at what cover three is, a lot of times the strong safety is going to be closer to the box. He's the one that's right over the X. I like to use this play a lot in the red zone because as soon as that guy passes that, um, the way this is designed is that that strong safety is supposed to cover the flats. The A is going to pull him to the flats, and he's also going to hold that middle linebacker where he is. I'm going to cut this play action off, and I'm going to throw this ball to X as soon as he crosses that uh, strong safety and that little hole that's created. The design by the Y stays where he is. He's going to hold that uh, free safety as 
um, close to the line, of, um, to the <clears throat> as close to the hash marks as possible, leave that X open. So it's here. Cut this off. He passes him. I'm gonna throw it. Actually, that time the the uh, middle linebacker didn't do what I want him to do. Let's try this again. Move this guy over. And the reason why this works as well is because of this this X route has this nice little in inside um, movement. And that's kind of one of those two things. You're throwing this. Oh, <clears throat> keep on getting hit now. Let's try this again. I want to make sure that you see this because this does work very often. And it's something that um, I like to throw in there. Oop, I don't want to do that. I like to throw in there because it's a quick hitter, especially on a user player. There it is. See that little that little th pocket? It looks like it's closer than it is, but it's really not. What happens is that, <clears throat> and this is, a, like I said, a red zone play about the 18-yard line. This guy gets bumped. Once he gets bumped, he releases, and he's waiting for this player right here. See how they both get occupied by this player? Now I'm throwing it right here behind him, and he's got that, he's got that inside release. Remember on that throw? And he's throwing it right there, and you get that animation almost every single time <clears throat> where this guy catches the ball in traffic and then gets down. Alrighty? So I want to show you that um, setup because I kind of really like it. Obviously, we had a couple troubles on it originally, but we definitely got it to work. Okay? The next one we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, <clears throat> A, and we're going to put him on a fade, and we're going to take this B route, and we're going to smart route him, okay? And then we're going to move him. Make sure he's on a smart route. Yeah, we're going to move him to the left. What this comes out to be, and this is by design as well, if you look at the Y, the B combination, it turns into like a trail route. I know it's kind of odd to say that, but if you were to watch this, and I'm going to point and replay, about the 40-yard line, the Y goes in, and then the B trails him. What I try to do on this play is I try to pass lead this ball up to get his momentum to go in that little pocket because the X is going to take that receiver left. The Y is going to take that middle free safety right. If you can hit it right there when he makes his cut and pass lead it up, you have a nice little uh, channel to go all the way down the field. So watch this here. Hike the ball. Goes up the field, and you can see that how they got the the, the uh, lead block as well. And let me kind of show it to you again um, when I show you here. So what's going to happen here again? When I mean like a trail route, is this guy and this guy make two trails, right? So this guy is the one that kicks him out first, and he's just driving that while this guy is trailing him, all right? And what happens there is they both kick out. I tried to throw this ball a little. See how I'm passing it up? Now I know that that guy also gets a uh, block on that free safety. I can go ahead and get more yardage on the field. If I can get this guy to over here to hold his block, you're off to the races. But unfortunately, the, the guy goes ahead and decides that he doesn't want to block him in his back, and he's doing his little jazz hands. Let it go. And <laughs> let's go that way. All right? So that's how that works and um, gets it down the field. So that's a really cool play, a little bit different than you probably ever see, but again, all these plays are by design, guys. That's the way we work here at SmartMadden.com. Um, the next play we're going to do is the PA tight end screen. I showed you this in the Cover 4 video where you flip it, and it has really high success. It's the same exact setup against cover three, and I wanted it to keep it that way, so that way you can go ahead and call it against either coverage and get similar results. Now what you're gonna do is as soon as you have the ability to cut off the play action with the right trigger, you do, and you fire it to the A receiver. I usually see that my left tackle Jake Matthews, this is like his highlight reel. A lot of times what he's gonna do is he's gonna get out there, block um, a player, and then um, knock, like, pancake him, and then get down the second level, and that's when you get big yardage. So let's watch him here. Cut us off. Throw it right there. And that time he didn't get, <laughs> get, didn't get the block because the guy got outside leverage. Let's go ahead and show it to you again. Here. Cut it off. Throw it there. See how it gets that pancake block? And you're going to be able to get 10 to 15 yards pretty easily. Um, a lot of times he pancakes him blocks on f the first hit, and then he gets up the field as well. See how he gets that pancake, and he gets back up the field. Now he gets another block, and he goes and just starts crushing people. I think, you know, if, if I was a lineman, this is the play that I'd want you to call. Like, literally, wa watch Jake Matthews on this play. He basically goes ahead. Oh, let me skip. I uh, keep on skipping it. All right, either way. Right there. He goes ahead. He gets out here to the second level, crushes this guy. He gets up the field, and then he gets up half this guy, and he crushes this guy. To me, you know, you give your lineman a little bit of fun sometimes, and that's the fun play, right? 
So the same thing, all you do is you're flipping it, you're cutting off the play action, you're throwing it out there. The next play we're going to be looking at is called the PE corner post. This is a real fun play that I had a real good video on. Um, if you want to check it out, I actually, it was a different call. It was called PA deep post because I did it out of the Redskins playbook, but it's the same exact play. And we're going to have a lot of fun with our, with our opponents on this play. And this is a cover three killer. Let's go ahead and show you how to do it. The first thing to do is take the A, you're going to motion him, you put him on fade and motion him to left. This is the tight end fadeaway play. What you want to do is you want to cut off the play action, and then you want to drift to the left with your quarterback, and you're going to hit the A receiver here. Watch, cut off the play, you drift a little bit to the left. As everybody clears out, you're throwing this back shoulder, and you have this ability to get down the field really, really easy for a nice game. The next play is going to be taking this X receiver, putting him on a fade, taking the A receiver, putting him on a streak, motioning him to the left. And what you're going to see here, I do this when I see that the defensive end is outside of the tackle. Okay, What I want on this play is I want the tight end to get bumped by that defensive end on the left-hand side to slow up his route. And what you're going to see when he slows up his route, the Y is going to take the free safety to the middle of the field, leaving the A wide open. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cut this off. He gets bumped. And now you're going to throw this right there. And you're going to have that nice tight end seam throw to be able to get down the field for really, really easy yardage, guys. All these plays by design. The next play, um, you're going to go ahead and we're going to do a little bit of fun here. We take the B, put him on a comeback, put this A, put it on a, a fade. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to carry out the play action. And you're going to roll to the right. And then you're going to fire it to the B receiver on the sidelines. What you're going to see here, and I'm going to show you that you see this, by design, by, by going ahead and putting this guy on a fade and motioning him out to the right, you're going to see as we roll to the right-hand side, this cornerback is now going to go after that player. See how we went after that player? So the comeback is wide open. I like this play like on a two-minute drill. I need to go out um, and get out of bounds or just get the first down. And I'm throwing it right there. I'm getting a nice, easy 10 to 15 yards on the play. Now I'm going to do the same type play and I'm going to go ahead and just move this guy over and I'll put the B on a comeback so it looks very similar, right? I want to do the rollout to the right on this next setup. Oh, I'm going to get hit here. Alright, let's try this again. <laughs> same thing, move this guy over, put the B on a comeback and we're just doing this to just kind of mess with your opponent a little bit. Here, get out there, that guy gets, gets keeps on getting off that block. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to stay in the pocket a little bit longer this time because what I'm doing is I'm messing up this block a little bit. I'm going to slide protect to the right so that way I, I let those guys know to go to the right-hand side. All right? So now I'm going to the right, and I'm throwing back this way. See how wide open this guy gets? It's kind of one of those tight end screen plays where everybody goes right and you throw left. I don't know if you watched the game the other day where uh, Greg Olson did it in the uh, Panthers game, but same similar type concept. I want the guy, after we've done this with the comeback, I want them to think we're going to the comeback. He's going to take his middle linebacker and he's going to just sprint out to the right. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back left and you're going to see how wide open this guy gets because of the two routes on the left hand side that run him off. Let me show it to you the two routes that I'm talking about. These two routes on cover three. There's two double posts, runs everybody out, leaving the A wide open, okay? So that is basically um, those two plays. Next one we're going to do is we take the Y, and we're going to motion him to the right-hand side, put the A on a flat, the B on a streak, and we're going to do the same rollout now to the white, to the, to the, the right-hand side, right? Okay, here, we're rolling out to the right, and you're going to be able to throw this ball right here. And you're really, because you throw a couple of these rollouts to the right, people are going to start trying to defend that, right? So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move them over. And we're going to think, all right, what we're going to do here, we're going to kind of fake out our opponent again. We're going to roll out to the right, thinking that we're going to the right guy. Now we're throwing it back to the left. And again, you're going to see how much open this tight end is going to be. Really going to give your opponent some headaches. Alrighty. The next one we're going to do is we're going to take this X. We're going to put him on a smoke screen. We're going to put the B, and we're going to motion him to the right-hand side. And by doing so, we're going to be able to do two things here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up this play, and then we're going to set up our next play. So this play, all we're doing is getting it to, we're going to cut off the play action, and we're going to get it to our tight end. He did get bumped that time, so this is really not going to work as well. But let's go ahead and show it to you where he doesn't get bumped. So, like I said, put this guy over, put this X on a smoke screen. And by moving that B, we're just establishing a different look. 
Now here's the A here. Pass lead it up. You're going to see how open he's going to be. And get him there. Now what we're doing is we're also setting up this next play. And what we're doing here is moving the B over so it's the same look. Putting the X on a fade. And the A on a slant. What that's going to do is going to cause another high-low type throw where if the B gets bumped, like we did earlier, the B is going to be open over the top. If the B gets a free release, the Y gets open. So depending on what happens, what we do is going to cut off the play action, look at the B. The B does not get bumped, so the Y is going to be wide open. That is probably the worst throw I've ever thrown. Let's try this again. I mean, that ball was like to the water boy. Uh, let's try this again. Move this over here. A on a slant. X on a fade, motion this guy over, we're watching the B receiver. If he gets bumped, we're going to B. If he doesn't, we're going to Y. Gets a little bit bumped, throwing it to the B receiver. Easy touchdown. You saw originally when he didn't get bumped how open that's going to be, but I want to make sure if I can show it to you again and complete the pass. I am a perfectionist. I'm sorry, guys. I got to do it. And A on a slam. All right, here it is. Let's see if he doesn't get bumped. He does get bumped, so unfortunately, we're not unfortunately, but we're throwing it to the B. Even, you see how I threw that ball? Even though I was on my back foot, I knew I knew the guy was going to be wide open. I could take a risk on that even though I got pressure. I just want to make sure that you see, by design, these plays will get open. And it will be a, one of those uh, situations where you can be confident that you know that why the guy is going to be open if you know the right coverage. There it is. And... Again, I'm throwing on my back foot because that guy's getting out of the way. I'm not really doing a great play there. I should be cutting off the play action. Um, let's just try it one more time. See if I can get the B to be unbumped so the Y gets open like I did on the first play. All right. So that's really the the uh, cutting this off. Again, still going to go to the B. Obviously, it's not a uh, a bad thing that that guy gets wide open. But you saw in the first one when I threw the, the terrible throw that the Y will get open if the B does not get bumped. All right, so let's move on here so we don't go too long on this video. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the X and we're going to smart route him. And we're going to motion him to the right. Now, we're going to put the A on a flat and the B on a... Um, a streak. That's going to be very similar to what we just did before. The only difference is going to be that it's going from the different receiver. And we're going to throw it right there and get the play up the field as well. Okay. So instead of the left receiver, so you have a better receiver on the left-hand side, you do want to smart route him because if you don't smart route him, it's not going to work as well because it's going to be a really deep one. But you smart route him, it's going to be a shorter pass. It just depends. Do you want to run it with your X receiver or the Y receiver? It's the same difference, right? So that's that. And the last one here, all you do is put the... the um, Y on a zig, and by doing so, you're going to be able to get the A wide open here on the left-hand side again, and you're going to be able to get the ball down the field. So that's just a nice, quicker uh, throw with no motion just to kind of get a quick hitter at your opponent. So that's the PA corner post, guys. That's all those plays. Now let's go ahead and look at the X under. The X under is a play that I'm going to have two different setups for. The first one is a really good play that I, I put in the play call sheet, and I labeled it as a play that you're going to go ahead and want to use when after you get sacked. A third and 16 play, something to that uh, um, variety because of the way this play design is. It takes this tight end route, and I've done a different video on that, so basically go look at like the route combinations wide open series called um, tight end unique um, curl route, uh, curl flat um, video to see this in a little bit more definition. But what you're going to do is this A receiver, when you move him from right to left, he is going to be able to get the receiver, I mean the cornerback on the left-hand side, to follow him when he gets down the field. What I like to do on this is put the X on a uh, curl and the B on some type of flat route. I prefer the zig, okay, and block your running back. When you do this here, when the X gets smart routed, he goes all the way to the um, the first down marker, and that left cornerback just keeps on drifting and drifting and drifting. I'm going to show it to you here on a 10-yard because I can't simulate that. And I'm going to show you how open he gets on this. You can see how that guy just drifts back, and he's wide open. Well, that same thing happens as the guy gets further further down the field. Let me show you. Um, so I like to do this on like a th you know after a sack. So this guy here goes ahead, and we're looking at this receiver. 
in this combination. This guy just keeps on drifting. Drift. See how he's already stopped? He's still drifting. Why is he drifting? Because he's this guy is pulling him to drift. Well, if this was a third and 17 play, this guy would go all the way down to about the 30-yard line, say. This guy would still drift. Still drift. See how he's going backwards? He doesn't make the cut until I throw it. Look, he's still drifting. And now when I throw it is what? So the further down, he's still going to drift. That's part of the play design that I'm talking about in order to make this work. The next one we're going to do on the same setup is take the X on a streak. 51. And we're going to put the Y and we're going to motion him right. Put the B on an in and block your running back. What this is going to do is going to get this Y receiver open on the left-hand side near the numbers. The B is going to go ahead and keep that player on the left-hand side as close to the line of scrimmage as possible while the A drives out that free safety. So we're going to go to the Y receiver. You're going to see here. There's the throw. And you're going to see how much yardage you're going to have. And you got good downfield blocking as well to be able to make that play work. We're going to go ahead and show you a couple more plays here. The next one we're going to look like is inside cross. Now, inside cross is a play in which it's going to be very similar to what I use for my hangman route. Um, and it's going to be something a little bit different way of doing it, but it works all the same. But I want to show it to you, okay? So what you're going to do here, you're going to want to be on all hangman routes. You want to be on the left-hand side. This is not a true hangman route. If you look at it, I'm put the X on a comeback because it's not exactly the hangman route um, where it's, not close enough to the uh, to the outside, but it does work very similar. And we're going to use the pull route for that as the B receiver. And I'm going to show you why this works in a second. Move this guy over. Put the Y on a zig. Right, and then the A receiver, you're going to just put him on a curl. The reason why I put him on a curl is just so that I can keep that user player honest right there in the middle of the field. So here's the route. The B is going to kick out that left cornerback away and it's going to drive him back and towards the sidelines more towards where the Gatorade logo is going to be. The Y is going to keep the other player there. We're going to hit this X, Y is going to be wide open on the left-hand side. As you can see here, he's going to cut down, and we're going to be able to hit him right there. Get up the field with a lead blocker. See how they had that lead blocker up there? If I wanted to go one more step further, I could put the A on a streak, and that should be able to hold that free safety a little bit longer where he's at, so we can get a little bit more yards after catch. All right? It all depends on how you want to work it, but that's a, another option as well. And that, again, is just a thought process to make sure that that guy stays a little bit more. So we get a little bit more yards after the catch. Catch that ball right there. And we're going to be able to get the ball a little bit further down the field because that, that free safety stayed a little bit closer to the middle because of that streak of a presence. The next play we're going to do, let's go do, do the, the PA comeback while we're here. Okay, PA comeback, it's going to be on the left-hand side as well. We're going to put the Y on a fade. We're going to, you don't have to block your running back, you can. It's either or for us. It's just one of those deals. And we're going to put the A on a flat and move him over, okay? So this time I'm going to keep the play action. And it's going to be the same thing. This is going to be the uh, hangman cousin, um, just because it's a little bit like it, but not exactly. And you're going to see here, you're going to be able to sit right there and catch the ball right on the sidelines and get the easy catch. The next one we're going to do is do the slot cross. That's also in your audibles. So right there, you're going to move this guy over, put the A on a flat, put the B on a streak, block your running back. What's going to happen here is if the guy gets bumped, you're going to pass lead it up. If he doesn't get bumped, he gets bumped there. So you're going to pass lead it up right there. If the guy doesn't get bumped, you're going to throw it to him on the sideline. Let's see if I can get it one more time without the guy getting bumped. It all really depends on how that guy reacts on the left-hand side. Sometimes he gets bumped, sometimes he doesn't. We're hoping that he doesn't get bumped. He does get bumped this time again. So then we're pass leading it up. Make sure you use that A possession catch because that's going to be able to get the guy in. If he doesn't get bumped, you're going to be able to throw that ball real smooth, real easy on the sideline. All right. The next play we're going to show is the middle slants again in your audibles. This is one of my favorite go-to plays when it comes to I see cover three. I want a quick play, easy play. It's in my audibles. All I'm doing here is blocking the tight end, taking the running back, and I'm moving him on a swing left. And... <clears throat> What I like to do is either pinch my line so there's no A-gap blitzes. But what's going to happen here is the RB is going to take the one, uh, the one DB that's over the Y to the left, while the Y takes that middle linebacker to the right, leaving this nice little easy channel to throw this double slant route here. So here you go. You're going to see this nice little hole. Throw it right there. And you're going to get 15 to 20 yards really, really easy. This is a great blitz speeder. Okay? You take the RB, swing them left, block your, running, uh, block your tight end, and 
slide protect whichever way that you need to to order to block uh, to block the a gap blitz. Oh, I didn't do that here. Let's do this again. Little slants. Block your this this slide protect whichever way, and you're gonna see that that's gonna open up against the cover three right there. Real quick throw, and your money. Alrighty. So that's those plays. The only other play. Let's. Oh, I got three more plays here. The next one's gonna be double sluggo. And double sluggo is a middle of the play only play. What I mean by that, you have to be in the middle of the field to make this work, but it's definitely a nice play to make work when you have that ability. If you know you're in the middle and they're in cover three, go to this play. You can always audible out if they don't aren't in cover three, but this is what I like to do on this play. I like to set this up a lot of times on the first play of the game where I run the ball to the middle of the field or let the ball go out of the back of the end zone. I see that they're in cover three and I run this play. What I do is take the Y and put them on a streak, put the A, put them on a fade. What's going to happen to block your running back? That free safety has to make a decision. Do I go left or right because I'm in the middle of the field with the, the Y and the A receiver? The Y is going to get down the field a little bit quicker, and because the A is making a little bit of curve to the right-hand side, the guy is going to have to follow the Y, leaving the A wide open. So let's go ahead and show you this here. He follows the Y. As soon as he follows the Y, we're throwing the A right, wide open and be able to get this as an easy play for a touchdown, guys. want to make sure you see that there. The last two plays is called Z-Spot and Flanker Dig. Two plays that are um, a little bit of a, a short yardage type plays. And want to make sure that you see we have some of these in there. Here's Z-Spot. Let's go ahead and show this here. What you want to do on the Z-Spot is put the B on a streak. The Y is going to motion block. Why is that going to happen? If you see what I like to do, guys, is I like to leave a running back almost all the time, or I like to leave an extra blocker. If I'm sending out my tight end and my running back, very rarely do I want to not back it up, because I don't like A gap, B gap blitzes, right? So what I'm going to do here is, because the route combination is really simply the R, B, A, and B to make this work, I want to put this Y on a motion block, which I'm going to pike it right behind the center. So let me watch this here, and this ball is going to go to the corner route. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to hike it right behind the center, block that inside guy there. As you see that there, that guy goes and gets that open. That guy didn't break on the ball as well as he usually does. He usually breaks out to the, t to the, the, the running back. If he doesn't, don't be alarmed, guys. Just go ahead and throw it to your running back. So you're putting the B on a streak. You're moving this guy over, hiking it there, and you're doing hitting that A route as soon as that guy jumps the route. There's the A right there, and you have that option to get the ball all the way down the field against cover three by also protecting your A-gap with blitzes. The next thing you want to do is all you do is put the Y on a slant. Real simple. This is just a real short yardage play. This is one that I know that if they're coming, I'm still going to get the ball out of my hand quickly. I'm going to throw the B or the RB receiver. And this is like a third and two type play. It gets down here. I'm throwing it right there and getting that yards that I need right there. Just a real simple play. It's not something that if you know that the guy's setting up an A-gap blitz, I'd go with. I'd go with the other option. And the last play here is called flanker dig. It's going to be another hangman type route um, situation here. And this will be the last play of the video. Let's go ahead and show it to you again. It's going to be flanker dig. And what this is, is going to be a nice auto motion, give you a different look to do it. Um, I put the A on a drag. The B stays on the drag. Block your running back. Put the Y on a... Uh, a, f a fade. What that's going to do is you're going to be able to get this X receiver with the double um, the double drags. You're throwing it right there and you have that ability to get up the field right afterwards. A lot of times with that auto motion people aren't looking for that comeback. They're looking for the drags underneath and you'll be able to hit that. So let's do this one more time just to show it to you and then we'll call this video a wrap. And here we go. And you see that ball right there. Get the ball up the field. Thanks, guys, for watching my video. Again, check out our website. It's Slump City and I, a uh, popular Twitch um, streamer. Check them out at Slump City. Um, what we do is uh, we design plays, guys, plays that work, plays that are going to get you the ball to your players that get down the field, um, stuff that's been proven. We give you the play call sheets. Obtain one at uh, smartmadden.com. Smart 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 right now, these play call sheets are on sale for a limited time. They do go up over time. You know, We try to do an introductory sale, and then we kind of make sure that they get priced right. We do put a lot of time in these um, into these plays. We lab them, lab them, lab them. I do appreciate your, your, uh, your support. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. Sign up for our website. You get a free... Um, 
play scheme right away, um, a six play scheme right away to be able to do it. Go to smartmadden.com slash free to get that and sign up for our newsletter. Again, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.